Hi everyone, I'm Rui, and in the last video I gave a quick introduction to the Alarm Console. But I also mentioned that there were many other features to it. So today, I'm going to show you a bunch more available in the little alarm bar alone. Uh, this is the alarm bar. Down at the end, there's a quick filter which allows you to match alarm records as you type. I don't even need to finish typing the word. While you type, suggestions and your personal history will be listed immediately. You can filter by column, of course. Example, I'm looking for alarms containing in their parameter description anything that has to do with CPU. Or maybe with the lock state. You can use quotes to filter on exact matches. This lets you filter a product by its specific name that you know. We have a spine lift network in the system uh, with a bunch of switches in LA. So if I write LA switch with no quotes, it will match those character sequences anywhere they may occur. Look, I'm not even interested in these alarms. But with quotes, you'll get matches on the specific character sequence as is. Lo and behold, we got alarms on our LA switch as well as alarms where these switches are referred to in the alarm description, just like I wanted. Now, here's one of my favorites. Press Ctrl while clicking items in the alarm console to quickly add them to the filter. Like, give me all warnings on Arista devices. Or maybe, I want to see all critical alarms raised on CPE products. I'm using the control key now, but you can in fact configure a different key in the user settings. It's also possible to use a negative operator to flip a filter on its head. That would be the exclamation mark. With this operator, the filter will become negative. Taking the previous example now, I want all alarms raised on CPE products that are not critical. And we end up with a few warnings instead. If there were major, minor or timeout alarms detected in CPE products, you'd see them here too. Now, comparison operators. Of course, they're here too. Let's uh, look for alarms with a service impact higher than one. No dice. Perhaps uh, higher or equal? Here we go. I see a couple of alarms on the downlink transmission sites, some IRDs too. But I really want to filter on a higher service impact, so Maybe I'll just cause some trouble. This is a media transport service for HD uncompressed video. If I drill down on the network, we'll see a chain of spine lift switches through which the video is passing. In fact, this port is also in use by additional services. I can tell by looking at these multicast groups. It would be a shame if someone were to trip on a cable somewhere. All the, uh, the other network devices downstream should in theory start complaining as well. So if I look again at uh, the filtered alarm list, we now have a higher order of service impact. As you probably noticed by now, while you're filtering, the background of the quick filter box and the alarm tab is highlighted. The title of the alarm tab indicates it's being filtered. If you click this button, it will only display unexpected alarms. You see, Data Miner Analytics calculates what we call the alarm focus based on a combination of likelihood, frequency, and severity of alarms. All right, this down here is the history slider. It shows the evolution of the number of active alarms across the last 24 hours. If you grab the little marker on the right that is set to now, and drag it to the left, you'll be able to see the active alarms at a certain time in the past. It's just like going back in time in the active alarms. Alternatively, you can uh, click the clock icon to specify a date and a time. Finally, alarm tab views. There are uh, three different alarm tab views uh, with the buttons next to the history slide. We are now familiar with the list view. This is the default view uh, displaying a list of alarms. Next up is the statistical view. In here, alarms are displayed as statistics. There are three sub-tab pages, severities, 
elements and parameters. Each of them will give you a, dr a different drill down approach. Now, each item in the list also has a horizontal bar. The length of the bar indicates the amount of alarms relative to others. If you click on an item, it will filter the items on the right, so you can keep filtering your statistics as you go. If you double click on an item, it will take you straight to those alarms in a regular list view, filtered accordingly, of course. Alternatively, you can right click and select show alarms to achieve the same thing. This is the reports view. For each element or parameter in alarm, a 24 hour timeline is shown, illustrating the progression of the alarm over time. Alright, all these goodies are available in the alarm bar alone, but I'll say it once more, there's even more features about the alarm console I haven't talked about yet, so keep an eye out for videos to come. There's a ton of additional information that you can find on our Open Dojo community, so don't forget to register there. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.